Hello everyone, good afternoon, welcome back, and I hope everyone is vaccinated, safe and well. So this interview is going to be slightly different, especially from the previous ones, given that I'm going to be shifting gears a bit. Uh, instead of interviewing healthcare professionals and policy workers like I have in the past, I'm going to be focusing on small business owners, and in this case, specifically um, small business owners that are in my community uh, of Winchester, Massachusetts. Uh, with the vaccination rollout and things opening up, I feel like they deserve the spotlight, especially because they went through so much hardship, all of small businesses, during uh, when COVID first started, uh, with like the shutdowns in the beginning. Um, and then there was obviously the restrictions that went, persisted throughout the pandemic, and then they were relaxed a bit, and then they were put back on. So it was almost like a roller coaster ride for these small businesses. Uh, so once again, this is why I feel like it's very important that I have at least a few of these interviews on this channel. So without further ado, I would first like to say that I have the pleasure of interviewing now Miss Laura Filler, who is the owner of Fuller Cup, which is the coffee shop um, with consummate elegance at her town in Winchester, of Winchester. And I'd like to first, once again, thank you for the opportunity to let me interview you, Mrs. Fuller. And if you wouldn't mind providing a brief introduction about yourself, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, good afternoon, Ari. It's my pleasure for sure. Um, yeah, my name is Laura. Um, I actually am celebrating our fifth year at, uh, as a business in downtown Winchester on September 23rd, of, uh, which is only a week or two away. We're very proud and very excited about that. Um, and as far as um, a little bit of that, just something to share with you, I know uh, my last name is Fuller. Uh, many people don't know that. Um, and it's kind of a cute way to start a conversation when serving coffee. The name is um, seemed appropriate when I was uh, fooling around with what to call this shop in the community. And in essence, it was about um, letting people come in and leaving a little more full than they came. So Fuller Cup came up, came about and with a little help of, of some uh, pretty talented graphic design artists, uh, we were able to uh, create this cup with uh, a softness and a warmth that I think complete, completely depicts what I'm, what I'm trying to convey to the community, which is you're welcome, come in, I wanna see you. And I hope you leave a little better off than you were when you walked in. I couldn't agree more. I um, I also think that's what you're briefly mentioning with like the orangish color that's on the logo. That's the, that's the, it's, it's an inviting color, which I, which I really like. Um, but I think the most important thing to address is how I'd like to hear your thoughts specifically on how the pandemic affected you. Cause it's, it's, I can I already know that it probably um, you probably received less customers than you usually would, um, yeah. especially when this first started and when it was really getting bad in the middle. But yeah. now that things are sort of getting and I'm putting this in quotation marks, getting back to normal. Do you think like that you're getting like all your customers back to kind of back to normalcy? Is there still a bit of a difference? Um, yeah, I, I think um, so. How do I say? So the pandemic was obviously very challenging, like you said, and um, I think I know my objective, our objective, or the team I had was to a commit to being safe and b commit to uh, opening the door every morning, no matter what we had to serve, whether it was just a few things or a lot of things. So I think, and then with that being said, I think. There was, there was a, some truth to consistency, reliability, familiar, familiarity when, when, when humans walk out and about in the, in the downtown area and they see something that they can rely on, they can feel safe with, uh, become familiar with and um, be comfortable. And I think that, and I know that's what I, what we, I myself as the business owner and as a human, and a, and a community member was ultimately trying to provide during this time. So we saw a lot of new customers. We saw a lot of our, our original ones. 
Um, and we still continue to do that the same. And I think the, aside from the pandemic, I think ultimately the Fuller Cup has, has um, introduced itself and myself as we're a choice for you and anyone can come in and you can go get a favorite drink somewhere else and then choose us for a sandwich or vice versa. I think that ultimate new and old customers are the same and it's still, in a, if anything, it gives people the choices what they want at that time, if that makes any sense. No, no, it, it definitely does. In fact, from personal experience, uh, for those who don't know, I of course do know you as Fuller. I have gone to your shops multiple yes. times. Um, yeah. The one thing that really attracted me to your shop was surprisingly not the delicious sandwiches. It was yeah. <laughs> the, the, the environment there, whether it was the employees working at the cash register or you just greeting me yourself and remembering my name, even though you've yeah. only seen me once a month yeah. later, it was really touching and it really meant a lot because right. it's, it's just, I'm just, I, at least, at least I thought I'm just another random stranger who walked into your store. But little did I know that I'm more than that. And that's also what I've learned to appreciate about not just your businesses, but other small businesses. And that's what's special about them is the connection that you can grow with them. Correct. Um, yeah. So that's what's really, really amazing. But uh, I also would like to know about how your sort of business, did it change at all uh, because of the pandemic? For example, things like, online ordering. I didn't realize for a while that you had that. And I don't know if you guys do deliveries, but something like that. Um, how did you guys adapt to adjust with this obviously turbulent time? Yes. So, uh, yeah, so yes, we, um, I think the biggest thing, I mean, um, uh, so aside from staying open, um, we obviously our team became very small and we had to adjust and figure out how to get yummy food to the community. While we may not be able to make it ourselves, there are many talented humans out there who make delicious food. And how do we get in touch with those people to bring it to the shop? So the pivot for me was to bring these already existing products, local products, and bring them to the shop to be like a, a landing zone for people to sell their product. And we got rid of the, the chairs and we were on the tables. So a little bit more movement and flow. We did immediately get the online ordering, which was on, on my mind to do, but just like, oh, we, we will get to, we'll get to, we'll get to it. But then there was a, it was necessary. Right. We did delivery for a minute um, and something that we're still trying to get more consistently. Uh, it's just another aspect of our business that we haven't been able to uh, do consistently enough to have it going. But the right. online ordering is something that's been very helpful and there's still Right. Um sorry, Miss Fuller, I'm not exactly sure what just happened, but would you mind just repeating what you said briefly? I think I might have lost connection there for a second. Oh, I, I can't. I'm not sure why. But... Sorry, just give me one second. Okay, so you can hear me. I can um, see that. One of the one of the many um, uh, so I'm not so sure. Sorry, could you could you try speaking just one more time, Ms. Fuller? Hmm, interesting. Why is this not quite working? Um, I, I can't quite hear you here. I will. All right. 
All right, so sorry, everyone, we're back. I think we just had a few technical difficulties. Um, so Ms. Fuller, would you mind just uh, repeating what you were saying? I think you were briefly talking about how uh, online ordering in your system has sort of changed with the pandemic. Yeah, so, yeah, so when the pandemic happened, um, online ordering uh, happened immediately. It was something that was on my mind and it, but it became necess a necessity in order to get, uh, to order for us to serve the community under the conditions. Um, our team was small, smaller then, just like most restaurants, the, uh, the team went home to their loved ones mm -hmm. uh, where they felt most safe. And I think the biggest, the other big move we did was um, we literally uh, looked up other local, you know, artesian purveyors, asked them to make their food to put on the Fuller Cup shelves so that we could offer it to the community. Uh, and that worked out very well. Right, and that's actually um, something that's really been interesting me about your business because I, I walked inside and you have so, so many um, partnerships and, and, um, and deals with these unique vendors too. They're not, they're not your average like Starbucks, uh, Starbucks coffee shop or something. It's, 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 it's businesses like yours, which are smaller and they're, they're quite frankly like a lot nicer in the terms of they feel more homey and stuff. Um, so I was curious how you went about actually selecting these vendors or did you go to them or did they come to you and how did you manage to work together during these during these times? Yeah. I, I, th I think that I, we, we really uh, uh, lo a farmer's market people who would go to the farmer's market and sell their product. And I, and I just simply asked them like, can you, will you sell directly to me and I could sell it to the community of Winchester. Interesting. And I guess, yeah, and I think, I think it just was a win-win because asking someone not to do what they love is terrible. But I was in a position, Fuller Cup was in a position to say, we can help each mm -hmm. other and we'll, we'll create a space if you make your product. Right. So really it was a win. And in my, in my mission statement, if, if anyone to, um, reads, it's about making connections and, and building those relationships. And that's exactly what we've done. Right. And I mean, what's actually fascinating, the more and more I hear about it, is the fact that um, it's really just the fact that you have a mission statement, like you said, and you have a goal with your business, which is, of course, to build a community, build connections and, and help everybody um, in the process. And really throughout this entire turbulent times, that's amazingly what you've been doing. You've still been able to accomplish your goals in spite of the setbacks. And that's what's that was what was most fascinating to me, at least, which was that um, your goal, which like you just said, which was to have a, to form a community with other businesses and other people was, it's almost like COVID was aiding that because it gave you the opportunity to reach out more. Yes, 100%, yeah. I mean, believe it or not, I mean, I think for some folks, and we are definitely one of those folks, the silver lining of this pandemic was the, the kind of opening the doors of building, you know, meeting these wonderful humans and it was a mutual help. Like right. they were helping me as well. And it, cause um, it, it, it's not easy running a, a small business. And so it was just definitely a win-win. And um, thankfully the community of, of the 890 zip code, um, they fell in love. Right, so right. It, it, it's been amazing. I mean, and of course I am just another example of one of the many um which was which is really which is really awesome so what i've also noticed at least in this interview is that you've been doing a great job of like finding the silver lining in a lot of things and uh getting really not viewing with covid you didn't necessarily view it as a um like a something that harmed your business rather you utilize it as something to make it better so are there any other examples of this or are there any sort of ways that you plan on continuing to do this thing? I mean, um, in addition to the, um, in addition to bringing the new product, Ari, 
in addition to that. Yeah, I think, right, I think right. that, yeah. So I think the one thing that I've been um, uh, really uh, looking into myself and uh, is the people part. And then particularly my, the, te the, the team, the humans that work with me who get, you know, day to day are in the grind, are in the, in, in the, in the trenches with me and uh, they, they're sweating literally. And, you know, they're, they're hungry and they're busy and they're tired and, and all those. So I think the silver lining is so, is how I can be a better leader mentor for them, more compassionate, um, more reduce the, how can I reduce this, make the better, make the environment better, a little less stressful, a little more fun. Right. Uh, I think that has to do with me just taking a step back saying, Lord, you can only do so much and your team is willing to go with you through the fire. And can we do it with a little less stress? And a little more fun, right? So we'll serve, you know, serve our customer, our our community, as well. And I think we're we're not, I think we're onto something. And I think we've been doing that well. I, I can agree because I think the way you've sort of shaped your attitude is actually a lot of people don't realize it, but it's a good strategy even business wise because what I at least from the outside have noticed is happening is you're 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 once again i keep you using this word but it's true your community that you've established with fuller cup um it's 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 once again inviting and it's very very it's a fun place to be and you enjoy yourselves being there but the kindness that you have despite everything of that goes on shows and as a result it attracts people especially during these rough times because just getting a sandwich is is all of a sudden turned into a very very enjoyable task and i think it's a, something that a lot of people can learn because you especially have wisdom you've been in this business for five years you've you 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 have experience it's it's something a lot of businesses can learn where if you do the same thing where you you provide something more than just a service right you're it's not just a sandwich shop it's a sandwich shop plus a place that you know the uh, that you know the people that work there, and you you enjoy talking with the people that work there. It's more it's more um, it gives you much more of a reason to go there, and it gives you much more of a reason to go there instead of the Starbucks that's right across the street because you're getting something more with Fuller Cup. Right. I think I think I'm gonna add to that too is um, you know creating or uh, being a good neighbor to right. my all all my other um, all the other businesses in town. I think that also uh, has uh, communicated to the community that we're all in this together and that if um, my friends at Nourish Your Soul need something or I need something, we can do it. If my friends at Starbucks need something, I can help. Or if I need something from Starbucks, they'll help me. So I think it's right. important that I think the community has really become to believe that we're all in this together. Right. And, and um, it, it takes humans and, you know, other people to make it work. And even people who work at the Starbucks, they're still people. Right. Of course. And it's so, impo and it's so important that, um, for me anyway, to recognize um, that, well, yeah, we're all in this together. Right. Um, and every time you say... It's actually quite funny. We're all in this together. I can hear the full house um, theme song playing in my head, and it's full house. And it's that's why. That's why. Um, aside from the message, I couldn't stop thinking about that. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the, the thing I, too, I would add to Ari is that it's. Um, I mean, I think what we've been doing the last you know four five years. And certainly during the COVID the pandemic, is we've we've been able to make relationship with with people like Joanne Chang from Flower, you know, yeah, Chef Joe from Atavala, right, uh, you know, uh, Susiana and Sasha from Lanando. So we've really been able to really forge these relationships that are literally to, and before the the pandemic were unbelievable, un unattainable. 
Mm -hmm. There's no way Joanne Chang will come to the 8-9 knows it code. Right. And, then, and yet when I asked her, and you, there she was. Right, so right. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And that when, again, it all, we all do this together, you know, it takes, right. it takes a community and, and sometimes you just gotta ask. Right, and right. And Joanne Chang might've said no to me, but she said yes. But mm -hmm. really she said yes to a community. Mm -hmm. And then again, I was the vehicle that allowed it to happen. And I'm so grateful for that. Oh yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And yeah. something that I've noticed that's also interesting is the fact that like this sort of community that we keep describing, a lot of people are not aware of it because when we think of businesses, the first thing that comes to mind is Walmart, Amazon, stuff like that. And um, we think of individual stores and we think, and unfortunately that's, or individuals, chains and stores like that. But unfortunately that's the same way that we apply small businesses. We think Fuller Cup is completely separate from Chow Bow Wow, but it's fun because I was recently in Chow Bow Wow and um, which is a dog place that's near yep. Winchester downtown. Yep. Um, yes. And I saw him who marketing all the car, all the local business cards in his store, um, promoting them. So it, it really is fascinating how it's so different from the mainstream world, which is like a killer be killed type environment, climb your way to the top and yeah. claw anyone down where it's, why not we all, why don't we all raise each other and elevate our businesses together? Right. And I, I think you bring up a good point. I mean, that being said, for example, uh, we were carrying uh, Cambridge dog treats. Right. And then we learned about Chow Bow Wow coming in and we stopped selling. Right. Because we want the, the, the customers to go to their store and buy the treats. Right, right. You know? And um, you know, nourish your soul. She does a lot of um, uh, almond cashew, you know, smoothies. Right. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. you know? And our olive oil friends, you know, they do a lot of different um, seasonings and what have you. And there's a conversation like, are you selling this? No, great. Oh, that's good. Oh, you are selling. Okay, great. We're not going to carry that. Right. We're going to send customers to you to buy that. Right. So, so back to your point, if there's a, um, a, an openness and a, a willing to search to, to support one another mm -hmm. to help, help us stay, stay in business. Right. And just to clarify so that people don't get confused with what you were saying, um, at least my understanding, were you saying that you're not going to necessarily like buy product off of these and sell it as quote unquote your own? Or are you just saying you're going to direct people to their store instead? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so, so like, so we, there was a, there's a um, Camberville, which is a brand name in Cambridge for dog treats. Right. We were, we had, we were buying these treats from Camberville and selling them at the store. Right. So when the, the dog store came into Winchester, I, I decided not to sell those dog treats. So mm -hmm. if I wanted dog treat, I would send them to the dog store. Right, right. Because I took, didn't want to sell the same product. Right. No, I completely understand. And that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Sorry. No, 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 that's okay. No, because I didn't. Because I just wanted people to understand where you were coming from, because I don't want it to be misconstrued as somebody thinking that you're saying like, Oh, we don't want to sell your things anymore. Rather, no, you're oh, no. you're doing you're doing something even better, which is redirecting yeah. them to the store, yes, promoting yeah. their store even more. Correct. And so, yeah. and, right. So exactly. So if someone comes in and says, "Hey, I need, you know, gourmet olive oil." I'm like, "Yeah, great. Go down three doors, and there's a great olive oil store." Right. Like, oh, great. And we've done that, and I'm happy to do that. You know, like, oh, right. I need a smoothie with all almond milk. Yeah, great. Go one door down to your right. It's, as near as your soul, it's awesome. Yeah. You know? so I think it's about that celebration of each other. And I think um, the customer and the community appreciate that because they're all like, oh, I'll, I'll carry it for you. But no, no, go, you can sprinkle your money everywhere. Right. Keep the community alive and vibrant. Right. No. And you're also just giving the, it's, it's obviously, in my opinion, um, less of a big deal as the main purpose of this, which is to promote other stores, but you're also giving the customer exposure. 
you're yes. not you're not just locking them into fuller cup you're allowing right. them to experience these different stores which right. bring their own thing to the table yes 100 percent. right and I, and, I, and I think people appreciate that it's like oh yeah it's like somebody it's like somebody going in asking for directions or someone came in the other day for french bread okay. i don't have french bread but i know d'agostino carries it mm -hmm. i know mama dudes on swan street carries it you know, so I'm like, right. no, go to these places. They have it and they may have other things that you might need. Right. That I don't have. Right. So there's right. just like this, go, you know, go and check these guys out. They're amazing. And right. It's only a few doors down. Mm -hmm. So yes, mm -hmm. I just kind of repeat what you said. And no, 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 that's, no, that's perfectly, that's perfectly fine. Cause it, it just reemphasizes a very, very important point that I don't want, um, to go, I don't want this to go over people's heads. I think it's, yeah, no. if there's one thing I certainly want to stick in this interview, it's, it's, it's this, which is that um, this exposure and the appreciation of these small, smaller businesses is yeah. way, very important and very underrated. Yes, it is. And, and again, not to say it again, but we're all in this together. Oh. And we, we want all these doors to stay open. Mm -hmm. There are many downtown areas like Winchester that they have many storefronts that are empty. Right. And, and Winchester has managed to keep many, if not all, of the storefronts mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. And we want that. Right. And someone may not know about the Fuller Cup or may not know about the Olive Store or, or the clothing stores or the dog store. Right. You know? So we want to make sure everyone knows about everyone so they can make their little trip around town. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, and what makes a downtown which like Winchester and stuff that feels so kind of quaint and special is not just the way it looks, but the people and, and where they're going. And if a downtown isn't going to feel special, if it's at the risk of sounding too frank, if it's polluted by Walmarts and Targets, that's that's a strip mall. That's not a downtown. Yeah. We have a great downtown. I think everyone's really works hard to keep it very lively and and uh, engaging right and, um, and uh yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm proud to be a part of it and believe me i'm sure everyone is extremely happy to have you miss score uh, thank you thank you Bob. um well i think that essentially sums up the main points that we were trying to um like sort of established with this this call. So I guess in conclusion, do you by any chance have like anything that, any words of wisdom that you wanna to give to other people? It could be related to small businesses or not. Cause I know that you as a person have so much to, so much to share and, um, or, or like your business, did, is there anything you would change over the last year or just things like that? Any parting thoughts? I, the only thing I would say, I think, uh, is what I've been saying the last few years is um, accepting, um, adapting, keeping perspective, and um, always, always try to be kind to to everyone, and that includes me or my myself to be kind. Um, it's because it's not easy out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's not easy, and so that's what I would say. Just yeah. It's it's um, people. I think this is more of a subconscious thing that people, um, or it's even hard, even for me, for you, for everyone, to actively realize that it is much harder to be kind than it is to be mean. Um, you can you have to consciously choose to be kind, one hundred percent, rather than. But you can subconsciously choose to be ignorant or mean or, or uh, dismissive. Um, one hundred percent. That's why you once you I think once once I at least learned about how difficult sometimes kindness could be, it makes you appreciate the people who are kind more because they're not just kind people. They're just they're they're actively trying to be kind people. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Well, in that case, once again, thank you so, so, so very much for your time, Mrs. Fuller. Okay. I appreciate how you shed light on the pandemic, how it affected small businesses and how in actuality, in, in certain instances, it helped them too. So um, 
I can also, for those who are watching, personally attest to your sandwiches and say how amazing they are. Um, I can't think I actually I was I coined an acronym SS because they're sumptuous and scrumptious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in case you haven't heard it enough from me, your sandwiches are delicious. Your thank you so much, Ari. Store is amazing and. Um, obviously also check out other stores for those who are watching that are in downtown because they're amazing too they are. yeah so just thank you so much for being here thank you so much Ari of course